Uh, my name is Clay Smith, and I'm here with Mr. Bill Carey, and um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about his experience in journalism and communication, and uh, what he thinks maybe about the future of journalism and his current projects and what's going on with him. So, um, first I'd like to ask you just if you could give us a little bit of a history of your experience with journalism, um, sort of from the start of when you started working and up to the projects and things that you're working with today. Uh, I got out of the Navy in 1992. And I went to work for the Tennessee um, that fall. Stayed with the Tennessee for about three or four years, um, and then the resume gets very complicated. I originally left the Tennessee to write a book, which I did. But when I finished the book, I didn't go back to the Tennessee. I, uh, I, I, um, I started a new or, or a, a thing called NashvillePost.com with a friend of mine named David Fox. Did that for about a year. Um, that partnership kind of broke up. And then over the next couple of years, I worked for public radio, I worked for the national scene, um, ended up um, moving around a lot for the next three or four years. And then um, kind of ended up leaving journalism behind to do books and history projects after that. So, great. Um, so kind of what in the beginning, uh, after you left the Navy, inspired you to go into journalism? Uh, I don't really know. Um, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of idea what I wanted to do. I'd written for the college newspaper, and and I I was good at writing columns, and so I guess that's that was the first thing. I don't necessarily know if I thought it would would be something I'd do for a long time, but apparently it was. Uh, and I, I'm not sure. I know that sounds weird, but there's a point in your life to look back and you're not sure why you did certain things. Why did I make these huge decisions? But, um, but I think that was the main reason. Okay. Um, so while you were in um, journalism and going from the Tennessee end to, uh, to different places, um, did you have somebody that kind of influenced you the most or someone that you kind of looked up to in the, the field maybe? or? Um... The truth of the matter is, no. Um, there were people who I worked with or worked for. I'm not saying I didn't admire them, but I don't think, anyone, I don't think there was any one person who who, who inspired me or anything like that. I, I was driven at some point to do different things. Um, the three years or so I was at the Tennessee, and what I really wanted to do at the time desperately was to go to another market, to a national market. I spent a lot of time trying to get a job at the Wall Street Journal or something. But eventually realized that I think I'd be better off um, just staying in this town and being a, being a large player in a small pond. Um, but I've never, I've never been huge in, this sounds weird, but I've never been one of these people that was driven by my admiration of another person. So. All right. Um, when you, when you left Tennessee and, um, to write your, to work on your book, what kind of caused you to do that? Did you have any kind of, um, grievances with the Tennessee and, or did you just want to write the book more? Or I always wanted to write a book, and there were a couple of conversations I had. There was one, I knew a guy who's, uh, named Richard Fulton, the younger Richard Fulton. And one time he and I were having lunch at Elliston Place Soda Shop. And he said, you ought to write a book about Mini Pearl Fried Chicken Company. And, and he told me the story and, and I thought, well, that would be an interesting book, but the market would be too small. And, and then somebody else said, I ought to write a book about something else. But I suddenly realized that there had never been a, a book written about national history that focused on the businesses. There were only two or three national history books at all, really, that, that were real history books. And they were just the standard issue, you know, talking about politicians and, and generals. And and yet, if you think about it, why is the city here? Why do people live here? They live here because they were brought here to make money. And so, um, so that was why I, I left. I did get a local foundation to help me do that book, um, which didn't have a title until I was done with it. Just as a book that was called Fortune Spittles and Fried Chicken. And uh, and that book did very well, um, certainly by local book standards. Um, not one up to retire on, but. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, let's kind of see what we've got. Um, so what were some of the um, most important things that you learned during your first years at the Tennessee about how news is reported and um, just kind of things you learned? Well, I worked for, I worked for almost every kind. I don't know if anyone's ever worked for so many different kinds of journalism in a short period of time than I did. I worked for television, public radio, newspaper, weekly newspaper, daily newspaper, and then early internet. 
the one thing I always tell people now is the news business is not um, about telling you the news. It's about telling you what somebody thinks of the news is. It's also about filling a certain amount of space every day that is consistent. And so you might have days where lots of ha things happened and you got to pack it all in. You might have days where nothing happened and you got to spread it all out. I think there's, in the last 20 years, there's been a, a very distressing trend away from real journalism. Everyone now thinks that there's actually more news out there when there's far less. Um, no one's, very few people are covering things. Um, no one's covering the courts. No one's really covering the schools. Um, everyone's got opinions on it, but no one's actually covering meetings. And so things are kind of happening in a vacuum, which is very scary. Um, and so, so that trend has got me concerned. Okay. Um, when you think back about the sto some of the stories and assignments that you've done, um, what, what story would you say maybe that you're most proud of? Oh, gosh. Um, <clears throat> it's been a long time since I did all these stories. Um, I don't know if there's one in particular. I can maybe list three or four. Business journalism did exist then. There was a news, you'd have a newspaper and, and the back would be classified. You had a own business section doing business stories and there were three or four of us that were pretty good at it. And we would report things, we, like if somebody came out and said that they were going to do something and the, the news media historically might have just said they're going to do it and put it in the front page, we were very critical. We often um, pointed out, we were, we were much more critical early than people were before us and have come after us. Um, there was a story in the paper two or three weeks ago that they're building a new theme park near Opryland. And I'm sure it's a legitimate thing, I have no doubt, but but we would be, there's so many angles to it that we would have covered by now, it's not even funny. I don't even think it's been reported yet exactly where the land is going to be. And also, we would have known about it before they announced it, because we would have had sources call us and say, there's something going on out here. Um, I do remember when the arena uh, was under construction, uh, the other reporters were referring to it as the $100 million arena. And then I spent a couple of weeks on the story. It turns out it was the $183 million arena, and the taxpayers are being lied to, which is not unusual for a big project. But um, to these days, they would never reveal that it's a $183 million arena because I don't think anyone's going through those papers and adding the numbers and checking to see if we're being told. Um, so, so I think I don't think there's one story in particular. It was just the way we did things. Last spring, the metro school system laid off two or three hundred teachers, which are not in the Tennessee. And uh, 31 of them are at one high school, not in the Tennessee. Or any, they still haven't reported this. And so, we would have had that story. Um, what do you think causes, what do you think has caused that disparity in between what, what reporting used to consist of and then the lack of reporting with some publications? Probably the... Well, it's been a long time. Um, there were two daily newspapers in Nashville prior to 1996, I think it was here. The banner went away, but when the banner went away, not only, let's say that take the legislature, we, we had two people covering the legislature and the banner had three. So that's five total. And uh, when the banner went away, their three went away. And then after about a year, the Tennessee got so lazy that they took away one of their two. So the city's gone from having five to having one. And that one person, actually, the Tennessee actually doesn't go to any of those meetings. And so, and so they're not covering any of that. Um, so the, the loss of the two newspapers was huge. But even bigger than that, I think, is the advent of the Internet and that it has made it so difficult for news media to make money. Um, and you, it has to make money or it won't, it won't last. But, um, I mean, I was just at the grocery store and saw somebody who is who used to be in the news media, but everyone, we, every time we run into each other, we all compare notes as to what many of us are doing now. But a lot of us, a lot of people are having to go do something else for a living. And uh, hopefully, this inter the, the phase. It's not that the internet's a bad thing, but when but everything can't be free. If everything's free, then all of news media becomes junk mail. And so that was why we made uh, Nashville Post a paid thing. And, um, but right now, it's, of course, it's not just news media, it's music and everything. Almost every intellectual, all intellectual properties become valueless in the era of the Internet, and it's very hard to stop it. Right. 
Well, because a lot of people have talked about um, the availability of news on the internet, and the, but the fact that Google and Yahoo aren't the people that are the bringing in the news. They only kind of are filtering it from places that are already taking it in. So, I, yeah, the difficulty, I guess, would be um, where is that going to go once media becomes less and less um, available? Well, I've had people who want to take my first book and put it on the internet. And I've said no, <clears throat> because I still like to sell my first book. <laughs> and a friend of mine just was very upset that I wouldn't let him do this. And I said, look, you know, uh, the only reason people write books is so that they can at least pay their pay back their expenses. We're not just doing this. We don't. I said to somebody the other day, if we're not careful, journalism will become nothing other than the Peggy Hills of the world. I'm referring to the show King of the Hill. <laughs> but it will basically be housewives or dilettantes, and there won't be any actual professionals. And uh, and that's scary. Yeah.